So now we're gonna look at FRQ number six of the 2025 AP Calculus AB uh, exam. So consider the curve G defined by this, show that dy dx is equal to that. All right, so this is where you're just gonna do, take this function, I'm just gonna recopy it down. I like to copy it down by the way, because it helps me remember that I don't forget anything. So I'm just gonna do implicit differentiation of this thing. So derivative y cubed is y three y squared, then times dy dx. Derivative y squared is power rule two y, but then by chain rule, got to multiply by dy dx. Derivative of y is just dy dx. Derivative of uh, one fourth x squared is just power rule. It's gonna be one half because this is gonna be two x one half times x, and derivative of zero is just zero. So you're gonna move everything that doesn't have a dy dx to the other side, and on this side we factor out a dy dx. So you're gonna get three y squared minus two y minus one is equal to negative one half x, and then just divide this to the denominator. They just put the two on the denominator up front and put the negative x, so they just make it ne negative x over two, that's the same as this guy, and then just divide by this expression here. I'm just trying to make it look like that thing right there. And that's nice because we can confirm that matches. Okay, there's a point P on the curve near two negative one with X coordinate 1.6. Use the line tangent to the curve to approximate the Y coordinate. Okay, so tangent line. So first thing, a lot of steps in there, a lot of words you parse, but the, at the core is use a tangent line. So tangent line is slope point form, right? Always do that. So what's the point? Well, they give us the point, right? So um, Y minus negative one is equal to M X minus Two, awesome, perfect, point's done. Slope, slope's gonna be the derivative, but don't just take the whole derivative, derivative at that point, right? At that point, which is two negative one, which means we're just gonna plug two negative one into our derivative here. So minus two over two times three times negative one squared minus two times negative one minus one. Okay, so, you know, I say, like, don't simplify these things, but it's going to be really ugly, so it's just faster for me if I simplify this. So this is positive 3 plus 2, that's 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Those will cancel, so I get negative 1 fourth here. Okay, so then you get y plus 1 is equal, y minus negative 1, it just makes it positive. It would be negative 1 fourth, x minus 2. And so y, you can just move that minus one to the over there. And so the the, um, the approximation that we're doing is to approximate x coordinate 1.6. So we're gonna say y of 1.6. So we're just gonna plug in 1.6 into here, 1 fourth, 1 1.6 minus two minus one. And that is, that is our approximation. It's just the y value on that tangent line. Um, again, you can use a calculator to simplify that. It's not necessary though. Uh, for x greater than zero and y greater than zero, there's a point S on the curve G where the line tangent to the curve at that point is vertical. Find the y coordinate of that point. So to have a vertical tangent line means the slope is like infinite, right? That's because vertical lines don't have slope. It's like take a slope that's like 10,000, right? That's like a huge slope. It's So you really want to focus on where the denominator is zero. So that's where you want to say, oh, and for C, for a vertical tangent line, the denominator is zero. So the denominator of the derivatives because the derivative basically goes to infinite value at that point. So we want to know when that's equal to zero. So all they want you to do is make sure you recognize how do you find a vertical tangent line there. And so here we're going to factor 3y and then y, and I guess we'll make this minus 1 plus 1. So that will work. 3y squared minus 3y plus y, that's negative 2y, and that's negative 1, that equals 0. So this is y is equal to, if this is 0, this is negative 1 third, or y is equal to 1. Now, they want it on the interval, so they said x greater than zero, y greater than zero. Um, there's a point, so we don't want to consider the this one because we only consider y greater than zero. Uh, find the y coordinate of that point is all they wanted us to do, so we found the y coordinate there. Okay, and then last step, particle moves along the curve defined by that. At that instant when the particle is there, dx dt is three, find dy dt at that instant. So this is a related rate. They're giving you a rate of change with x. They want you to find a y, rate of change with y, and they give you an expression that relates x and y. So we're gonna write that expression down, 2xy plus uh, ln y equals eight. And they told us that dx dt, they say three. Uh, three at 
that point uh, equals three at the point four one. Just double check if I read that correctly, four one. I should have put together the document a little bit better. Okay, so we're just gonna take the derivative with respect to time of this expression right here. Okay, so remember it's related rate, so everything has a chain rule in it, unless there's a t in it. So everything has chain rule. So this is a product rule. So we're gonna do 2x times the derivative of y, which is dy dt, plus derivative of 2x is 2 dx dt times y. That's product rule there. Plus ln, derivative of ln of y is one over y, but then by chain rule, I need to pop out a dy dt. And I always make this mistake, but derivative of eight is zero. It's not still eight, right? So I take the derivative. And now we just plug in values. Honestly, I don't solve for dy dt at this point. I just plug in values because that will just make it numerically simpler. So the x is uh, four. dx dt is three. y is one, that's the y point, plus one over one dy dt equals zero. This is gonna be eight dy dt's and one dy dt's, that's nine dy dt's, plus, and then this is six equals zero, so then dy dt is gonna be minus six over nine, which you can just leave it there, or just if you wanna do the simplification, it's minus uh, two over three, okay, like that. 